Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, I will talk today a little bit about game development in HTML5 and about is it possible to create the gaming console in uh, yeah that runs HTML5 stuff. So let me introduce myself first of all. I'm Michal Budzinski. I work uh, in at Mozilla in, on something called Firefox OS. How many of you knows what Firefox OS is? Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's the operating system, new operating system like Android killer and iOS killer, no, but written in JavaScript and open web technologies. No, it's not really a killer. We have completely different target, but that's more or less what it is. And I recently moved to France. I live in Paris now, and I'm quite disappointed because I thought that living in here, I will eat like snails and frogs every day, like usual uh, French guy, but we are eating only Indian food in our office. I don't get why is that. Is Indian food the national French food now, or something like this? No. <laughs> okay, but I'm from Warsaw, from Poland, and French people should know a little about Poland because you really like love to steal our famous people and say that they are French, like Marie Curie or Friedrich Chopin. And yes, I also organize On Game Start. That's the first HTML5 gaming conference. We already had two editions of that in September last year and in September this year in Warsaw. And but Word is too big for just one HTML5 gaming conference, so. I'm doing next one in March 15 in New York also. And what else? Well, okay, I think I'm run out of battery. So I create also some ridiculous web stuff like CSS Nyancat. That's the demo I made last year. It's a Nyancat animation, but without any, it's, it's animated, but of course that's just a screenshot. Uh, without any single line of JavaScript or without any graphics, like this is a gradient in here, or the mouth is just rotated E letter, yeah, and things like this. But let's get back to the topic of my presentation. Uh, the next console generation will be the last. That's, that are words, uh, that is a quote from the interview uh, with Sevat Yerli. That's the guy who is the CEO of a company called Crytek. How many of you knows what Crytek is? Really? Okay, so Crytek is the company that makes big games like Crisis, Far Cry, and other big uh, console and PC titles. And he said a couple of uh, nice words about the regular customer, like the who, buy, who plays games today. So uh, today's gamer buys a game for 50 cents, download it and play it for couple of times, couple of minutes per day for a couple of months. What that actually means for game developers? That means that that, that, that is not the like, typical gamer now. That is. Because, uh, okay, let's talk a little about numbers. We have a lot of people all over the world, right? All a little bit more than 7 billion now. And about 4 billion of them had a mobile phone, okay? But only 3.5 billion have a toothbrush. <laughs> so you can realize that mobile stuff, it's getting serious now, right? But what that actually means for HTML5 developers, because most of the games now are written in C, like the real games, right? Not the tech demos or anything like this. And we are just really tiny in this whole industry. So a lot of real game developers just treat HTML5 like a toy, right? Okay, it's nice that you have something in your browser, but pff, don't be ridiculous, right? And is it really true? So uh, how actually HTML5 games looks now? So every time when someone starts working on a game or starts, let's say, Okay, JavaScript is, mo is mostly used by web developers without any game development experience before. So every time when someone hears, okay, it's possible to write HTML5 game, let's do Tetris, right? That's the first, that's the first uh, choice always. So we have like million of different Tetris implementations. 
I'm not really good at this game, but I really love it. Arik Tsipas is of the guy who creates it in Russia, in, in Russia probably, like 20 years ago, is one of my personal heroes. But okay, let's forget about it. Anyone knows how Tetris looks like? And when this game developer creates his own Tetris using canvas or using DOM manipulation, because in this example, actually, this is just a table with different cells colored by like, like pixels or something like this. Then they realized, OK, but that's boring. Let's do something really web specific. So that's how, why we have like tons of WebGL Tetris. And it's, well, I, I have some resolution problems, but, and I will have, unfortunately, but you can imagine that that's just a Tetris with three dim two dimensional uh, blocks, but rendered in 3G, right? So we have something like perspective and fake 3D in here. Oh, it's not fake 3D, but it's 2D, 2D game without any 3D stuff, right? And it's also quite boring because it's still Tetris. So after that, our developer realized, OK, but we have actually 3D in, the, in here. We can see it on the screen. Why not use it? So the next step usually is to creating something in 3D. And let's stay with Tetris, right? I don't know. You know the game from like 90s or 80s called Blackout? No, that was actually, I, I played it. It was written in QBasic as far as I remember. I played it on my first computer when I was like, like really young. And that's, <sighs> oh, come on, really. OK, yeah, stop scripting. OK, you need to believe me that it works. <laughs> but that's still a little bit boring. And we are game, we, are, uh, we as a web developers, we, li we love hacking. Like, if you try to implement outstanding feature in your website or in your game or your app, whatever, you had like 60% sure that it will not work in Internet Explorer. So you dig and hack and try to change it and, and run it in, in this, let's say, browser, right? So uh, what about CSS Tetris? So it's kind of hacky, right, to create a Tetris without any single line of JavaScript, without any single image, right? Uh, OK, I think that we c really? Uh -huh. Great. <laughs> we cannot call it actually a game, because that's just the animation that reacts on a Hoover event and then starts to creating blocks with divs and gradients and things like that, and it starts playing it. But that's the first step, OK? So, whoa. yeah. So what about 1K Tetris? So the completely game written in just one kilobyte of JavaScript with sound and logic and everything like that, that's more hacky, right? And it's actually possible, like, that's and we have music in here. And everything is written in, and everything is, 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 that's just one kilobyte of JavaScript code. So that's more like a demo scene thing, not uh, really uh, web stuff. But 1K is a lot of code. It's more than a thousand cars, characters, right? So what about Tetris? in 140 bytes, 140 uh, 40 characters. Is it possible? So like m like rest of the examples I will show you today, yes, it is. Oh, no, 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 no. So that's the Tetris. Uh, that's Tetris written in 400 Ks. It has only two types of blocks, the double block and the single one. Yeah, and the funny thing about it is that, as I said, it's just 140K, so it fits the single tweet. So you can tweet the game and copy-paste it and play, right? <laughs> and yes, so as I said, we love hacking as web developers, but that's not the good way to write games. We have something, I called it table legacy, because we love to use tools in the way we 
shouldn't never use them. And we, we've learned that while table tag was the main tag in the web industry, right? Probably every single one of you creates a page that uses uh, table tags with uh, background images inside, right? Like 10 years ago or even three years ago in Poland. So yeah, uh, don't use tools how you shouldn't use them. And it's, but okay, uh, some of the examples I want to show are not really, let's say, okay, I, I will maybe show that because I showed you first one, uh, one uh, Tetris that use only CSS, but that wasn't really a game, that was a demo, right? Without any logic and things like that. But actually people love this using tools in a way they shouldn't so much that they create actually a lot of games that really are games and have even logic written in, written in CSS. So the first one I ever found was the Tower of Hanoi. It's a simple like board game. I played it when I was two or even less in which you need to transport all the blocks from the first stick to the last one, with, but you cannot put the bigger one on the smallest one, blah, 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 right? And the whole logic in here is written in JavaScript. But what's the, how it actually works? And that's really a simple idea because all of this area is just a div with scrollable thing and you have all the possibilities inside already <laughs> defined. <laughs> and clicking on the link just change the hashtag in here in the address tag and transports you to the <laughs> to the good idea, right? Okay, that's the European uh, way to do it. But okay, I don't want to offend anyone. But and I'm a little bit envy even that like 90% of crazy shit in the internet comes from Japan. And so the most craziest thing about CSS gaming or obviously made in Japan. Like, okay, that's are just simple puzzles. So it's not really, uh, really, okay. No. So those are just simple puzzles that you just, okay, transfer, right? Not really big deal, but look in here. Zero lines of JavaScript code, 100 lines of HTML5, and 2013 lines of CSS code. Quite nice, right? But that's not a game. It's just a simple puzzle stuff. So what about the RPG engine? It's called, as far as I understand, Japanese CSS, uh, Toyota, Sushi, RPG, uh, Godzilla, something. But uh, it actually works. and. You can control the character on isometric like board. Okay, I'm I'm really sorry about my resolution. I oh yeah, we have a scroll bar here. Nice. Yeah, so you can control the guy who is also created from that there's no any graphic in here. He's just created from divs, like a thousand of those or something. And no, no, maybe a couple of hundred. And it works. You can control the guy in, in here. Let's Check how it's written. Like two lines of oh no line of JavaScript code. I don't know why it displayed why it shows two. One hundred seventy-four lines of HTML. Oh, that's the guy in here. And five hundred CSS lines. So not so big, but still, it's just an engine, right? It's not a real game. So that's the craziest thing I ever found. Online, one of them, okay. And that's uh, like hack a mole game. I don't know the exact English word for it. Like, there are crocodiles over there, or alligators, I don't know the difference. And you have some amount of time and you need to click on them. And. Mm. Yes, so that's how it actually looks like. Bang, 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 bang. Yeah, so it's counting your points in here. And the time is running. Uh, well. Okay, game over. 
how it's actually created. Every single alligator is just a come on guys. Oh, it's just a style checkbox, and if you click on it, the checkbox changes its uh, value from unchecked to checked, checked true, right? So that's that's the whole point, and it used 40 lines of uh, HTML and 8,387 8, lines of CSS. So that's huge thing. And the other thing created also by, th by the same guy is a baseball game in CSS. And that's my favorite, actually. Let's check it. Whoa. So the point in here is to click on the ball. I'm not really good at this game, but Okay. Yeah, the guy throws the game and the uh, the ball, and you need to click on it in this small rectangle on the in the middle. <sighs> okay. <laughs> game developers suck at games. Anyway. Well, yeah. And I have one point. Home run. Great, right? So how? Whoa, whoa, whoa! No, 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 no. How complicated it is to create such a game? Uh, zero lines of JavaScript code, 100 lines of HTML, and 9,370 lines of CSS. And what's my final thought on CSS games? Don't do it anymore. We don't need it. Okay, we proved that it's possible, but let it go. <laughs> really. What about the real games in... Uh, HTML. We have WebGL now, and like most of the real browsers support it, because probably Microsoft will never do it, because they have... WebGL is based on OpenGL uh, graphic standard, and Microsoft has its own called DirectX, so they will probably never implement anything or implement something called Direct Web DirectX something, and I don't want to use it personally, never. So I'm not sure about the future of gaming of WebGL games in uh, in Ex Internet Explorer, but yeah, that's I hope it will work as expected. Mm. Yes, so three, two, one, yeah, it's a great uh, example of a game. Okay, it looks like like old games from PS One or something like this, but Still, it's in your browser without any plugin, and it's 3D with dynamic lightings and things like that. Oh, okay, I, I really suck at game. Sorry. <laughs> and but that's just uh, like racing games, and that's not so excited. So what about maybe a Counter Strike implementation, multiplayer Counter Strike implementation in the browser? So there is a startup from London called Play Canvas, and they create a whole engine to create a WebGL 3D multiplayer games and this game with the great title Demo is the demo that shows that their engine actually works. So, okay, bye. Uh, okay, let's choose a name. Oh, how? Oh, yeah. We have a full screen uh, support in here, and un oh, there is one guy also on the on the map. We can see all the players connected over there, but okay, it will be hard to find him. But you need to believe me that it's multiplayer game, and it kind of works, and it looks quite nice. Like that's what I expected for web gaming in the future to look like. Okay, I cannot find the guy. Oh, here it is. Oh, he's probably he probably logged out, but okay, his fault. Did I tell you already that I suck at games? Okay. <laughs> and yes, so that's actually what we do for for on game start because as a gaming conference, we didn't want it to create like a boring website for a conference with names of the speakers and things like that. So for this year's edition, we create a platform game. Uh, whoa, 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 what's this? We create a platform game. Uh, oh, come on. Okay. <laughs> really? Oh, great. 
we create a platform game that you control an astronaut, this guy, inside the spaceship, and if you want to, you can find the speakers, like this guy, and talk to him. And he will introduce himself, talk about what he is talking about, like in the old school NES platformers, and things like this. Yeah, you can be killed by lasers. I really like this particle effect. I wrote it on my own. <laughs> yes, so, but that was just a simple canvas platformer. So this year, for uh, New York's edition, we made more or less the same thing. So that's, that's the same guy, right? But in WebGL now, with the conference logo, that's the spaceship. And yeah, you can find it in here, right? That's the, the conference logo. And that's ours. Oh, I think I need to. Yes, so that's our guy. Here is a speaker. Yeah, th it's, it's on the planet, so everything. Oh, there is a moon somewhere in here. Yeah. Hey. And you can talk to the speaker like, hey, hey, guy, hello. Hi, I will be presenting about blah, 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 blah. Nice, go to hell. And so yes, that was the next step in web gaming, right? We have 2D, but now we focused on 3D stuff. But what about selling your games? Even if you create the best game ever and no one will heard of it, it's, you cannot say that you're successful. So we have a couple of distribution channels for HTML stuff. First one is Pocky. Pocky is, uh, is like a wrapper for your HTML applications and games that runs on Windows, on desktop, and you can, and it has its own app store. So you can publish your game in the app store and Windows user can install just simple client and install those uh, apps from, from the Pocky app store on the desktop. The other thing uh, we are actually w working on now is Mozilla Marketplace. So uh, the main idea is that we want our applications to run on every type of mobile browser or desktop browser. So it's not like we are doing thing on things only for Firefox. Of course, we are focusing on Firefox OS now, our mobile system. But uh, our appli your application created for uh, Firefox OS could, in the future, when all the other vendors will implement the standards for their browsers. Work in uh, our iOS or Android or desktop Chrome. Actually, I think that Marketplace apps already works in desktop Chrome S and things like this. And there is Market.js. Market.js, that is uh, something, uh, th the idea is originally from Flash because in Flash there was uh, something called Flash Game License, so the companies could buy a uh, the, the developers could publish their games and the companies interested in it could buy bought the licenses for games. So we have now same thing for HTML. But what about the consoles? Because the, uh, my, my topic today is about consoles. How many time I have, do I have? Well, okay, I need to speed up. So we have a console called Xbox created by one company, okay? And how actually games on Xbox looks like. So most of them are, because it's open for uh, some developers, so like indie developers. So you can write your game in C Sharp uh, using XNA framework, and then the games are converted to .NET bytecode and run on the, on the console. You cannot execute unmanaged code on Xbox. That means you cannot uh, run like JavaScript engine so you could not do things like PhoneGap did, uh, right? Uh, you so run the JavaScript engine and run your, your JavaScript on top of it, unfortunately. But there is thing called Jurassic. That's, uh, Jurassic is a JavaScript to .NET uh, cross compiler that cross compiles everything in, on runtime. So it's not as easy as with other cross compilers because there are some restrictions on uh, Xbox. But the guy who creates Impact Engine, one of the most popular gaming engines for HTML5, Dominik Shablewski, ran his games on Xbox. That's uh, 
Biolab Disaster, his main and most famous game, platformer game, and that's the Xbox it's run on. It's uh, after cross compile. Okay, on in the browser, even in the old browsers or in the first iPhone, it has around 60 frames per second, and on Xbox it has like three frames per second or something like that. So there is still a lot of things to do in there, but that's not the Xbox gaming. That's something. That's JavaScript pretending to be an Xbox, but that's not an Xbox, right? So what about uh, like running uh, the, is uh, doing an open source uh, gaming console even possible? And Android actually did it because we have a project called Oya or something like this. And that's the open source gaming console. It starts on Kickstarter earlier this year and they wanted uh, around uh, 9,000, nine, almost a million dollars, but they earn like almost nine. And the point is that you can run Java, uh, you can run Android stuff on the console as a native thing because the console runs Android. And converting JavaScript to Android is a way easier than converting into Xbox because we have things like PhoneGap, for example, but PhoneGap is not really something useful in game development because it creates how many of you heard of PhoneGap? Okay, so you probably know that it creates just a Chrome-less browser window and put your HTML5 documents inside so the performance isn't really good because it's still a browser, but it pretends not to be. But we have all other, uh, other solutions like Cocoon, AppMobi, Marmalade, or Spaceport recently acquired by BBC, for, uh, probably. So what happens in those examples? Uh, why it's better and more efficient than PhoneGap is that we have your, uh, our game or application created in HTML5 with CSS3 and some JavaScript. Then some magic happens, maybe not Magic Johnson exactly, but some magic, and we have an Android file because uh, all the logic is still in JavaScript, but th this magic layer transformed uh, our drawing functions, like Canvas drawing functions or WebGL drawing step to native OpenGL ES layer, like uh, the native Java Android stuff. So it's a way faster, like boosting performance up to 10 times, or uh, the, the creators of those, uh, of those frameworks really love to show different uh, box to, box2D is the is a physics engine and it's quite slow on the in the browser but on using those uh, those frameworks you can achieve up to 200 frames per second I have no idea why do you need such a thing but okay and we have Firefox OS now the open source uh, open source operating system for mobiles and yeah that's the phone that's me with a Firefox phone oh I have a terrible haircut because I live in France and, uh, France and don't know any French, so I don't visit any hairdresser. But <laughs> we have WebGL support on Firefox OS. We have a Gamepad API in JavaScript now implemented there, and it's open source. And we have some magnificent, I'm not even sure if it's a good word, but uh, uh, libraries like tracking JS. So Tracking JS, it's a simple library that uh, detects it, it detects the colors or uh, lights on the on the from from using your camera in in your computer. So you can, for example, okay, let's yeah, write a drawing application with your camera inside your browser or Minecraft thing, right? Control it with your controllers and it's totally open sourced and really easy to use. You just declare which color you want to track and it's just tracking this color. So it's really great. So that's just one step before implementing your own Kinect in your open web gaming console, right? And but we still have a problem. What about real game developers, like real, like uh, companies like Ubisoft or Crytek or whatever? They put really a lot of money in developing games using C or any other language for other 
platforms. But OK, Douglas already presented you Mscript and the cross compiler of uh, LLVM cross compiler to JavaScript. So we have, I have a couple of examples on how it works, actually. That's the uh, 3D uh, physics engine, Ballad.js, compiled from C to JavaScript without any modifications in the JavaScript code. It uses WebGL for rendering, and we can achieve up to 80 frames per second. That's really great. Uh, that's really great goal. And but that's just a demo, right? So what about games? Maybe that's not really a big title or really or some big stuff, but we have games already compiled from C to JavaScript, like this one. It's a simple match three, match three game. Uh, oh, come on. Yeah. Ooh. And it's also written in C and run, well, I Oh, come on. <laughs> OK, it works. <laughs> yeah. And yes, but that's more like a funny example, not a game. But Mozilla uh, announced in August something called Banana Bread. And that's a cross compiler of 3G FPS engine into JavaScript. And unfortunately, I updated my Firefox 90 today. So it could crash. So don't laugh. Okay. Well, yeah, it, it works. Yeah, so that's, we're waiting for bots with some battery gun. Where are the bots? I really suck at this game, unfortunately, so. Okay, they, oh, what, 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 where are you? Okay. Yeah, and we can uh, switch to 3D uh, to a third-person perspective, but no, it's not really good. Yeah, so it's really dynamic. It looks like a game. Okay, maybe it looks like Quake 2 from 1999, but still, it's it runs in your browser without any additional plugins, and it runs not only in Firefox, it also runs in uh, in Chrome, and as I said before, it will probably not run in uh, in IE because they don't want to implement this. But yeah, so that's the real game written in C and compiled to JavaScript. So the main conclusion of my talk today is that JavaScript is our generation's Apple II. So that means that it has extremely low entry points. Okay, it's like Douglas said before, it has like a lot of people use it and don't know how, but we should teach our kids to run to write games in JavaScript because it's run everywhere. And so a uh, couple of last closing sentences about uh, Firefox OS gaming console. So we start thinking about implementing dashboard like in Xbox, controlled by uh, your gamepad with marketplace support and different HTML5 games inside because it's, and you can do it if you just know CSS and, and uh, HTML5 even with really low JavaScript knowledge because all the uh, visual layer of Firefox OS is written in JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. And yeah, it's controlled by Gamepad because we have a Gamepad API now, as I said before. But yes, and you can run Firefox OS on Raspberry Pi. There is a lot of tutorials and demos, and people are doing all the time some crazy shit with Raspberry Pi. So I think that uh, gaming consoles sooner or later will be created. I hope so. That's the end. Great graphics made by my pixel designer friend. That's uh, Firefox killing small uh, internet explorers. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so let's do it. If you have a free time, just dig into it and hack and create your own games, your own platforms, and run this open, open sourced, uh, open sourced operating system everywhere you can. And because web is the new platform, right? And 
it's now. We don't need to wait for anything. Thank you. Merci. That's everything I wanted to say. <laughs> Merci and bonjour, that are only French words I know. I live in only three months in here, so. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, exactly. So your Polish is better than my French. Yeah. Any questions? Thank you. I really need to smoke.